It's a Burmy! It's a Burmy! <laughs> Look how cute it is! Ooh, this is a bigger one. I have never two caught scams? two on one oh, trip. Oh my gosh, look how cute. One lift of the rod, one drop, I was on. Oh no! Yes! Yay! So it's kind of heavy for the depth, but the current's ripping, so we need it. Here's the Jig Pro bag. I see color in mine, man. I only got hers already. Welcome to episode three of our Yankee Caps Pulley Ridge series. I have no idea what season we're on, guys. You're gonna have to go figure that out for yourselves. Maybe I'll have it pop up. We've done a lot of these. So if you guys have been following along or watching our other videos, we had a pretty epic morning, last video, fishing, fishing, slow pitch digging. This is squid brain, guys. Like really, it's getting to me, you know? Slow pitch digging for groupers, amberjacks, yellow eye snappers with the jig projects. See? Right there. Without further ado, my name is Emily, Amanda's behind the camera, this is Kona, and welcome to our channel, Gale Forest Twins. doubled up up here. Who's doubled up? You and Daniel? Yep. So we were talking about our jigs and I have a 440 gram jig which is heavy and drops really fast which is why I'm doing it. But my braid's a little thicker. I think we have like 30 or 40 pounds and he went with a 340 gram jig but his braid is only 20 pounds. So ratio wise we both probably dropped to the bottom at the same speed. Yeah. Right? Fun fact. I like that one. What's your guess? Probably not yellow eye. Yellow eyes, more yeah. yellow eyes, more big yellow eyes. Probably yellow eye. Yellow yellow eye. eye. These are these are pretty. These big are things. big yellow eyes. Yeah. yeah. These are nice fish though, because they don't like destroy you when you reel them in. And, it's and they're still so quality. Yeah, they're still so quality. They're still pretty decently sized. Oh look at there's this one yellow the first eye. One. That's a nice big yellow eye. Wow, they look. That looks good. Here it comes. Got a big glare, so it's tough to see. There he is. Nice size snapper. Wow. All right, bring him on up and over the rail, Emily. There you go. Here he comes. Yay! He's a little slightly smaller guy, but that's okay. We've been using, we've been consistent with the strike line of Jig Pro jigs, which are the very skinny streamlined jigs. And they're pretty good right now because we've been fishing definitely a little bit on the deeper side. So they're going straight to the bottom. And I just want to point out how huge this is compared to the fish. Ready? So let's check this out. So our jig, put the jig down next to the fish. And it's pretty much the same size. So it's cool that basically it doesn't really matter how big or long your jig is. You can still catch just about anything. Hooked up, my first drop again. Amanda's first drop. My first, yes. I'm thinking another and we're yellow still eye. Using that same same jig. It's sa still jig. working. Jig for jig. What is the expression? Never leave fish to find fish, and I think it's the same for jigs. Don't change your jig if it's working. Correct. So let's talk about our personal um, like order of importance for jigs. All right. Well, first things first. You have to think about. Water depth and current. So I'm gonna go with grams. Grams is the first thing you need to consider. So if you're in super deep water, you need more weight, and if you have a lot of current, you need more weight. So for example, I think we're in like around 300 feet of water. We're using 440 grams. We have a lot of current, yes. so it's kind of heavy for the depth, but the current's ripping, so we need it. After that, we think about like shape. Now we're using the streamlined jig. It's like a pencil shape on purpose because again, water depth and current. We want to get to the bottom fast. There wasn't a lot of current. Maybe we could use the deeper, the deepest ones. But that's what so we're using the strike. Have, like, the wings so have the wings on it, so they're gonna take longer to get to the bottom. Then we can like think about color. And as far as color goes, today we're using the silver one, and it's working. So we're not gonna change it. <laughs> we'll change it when it stops working. Oh. It's here! It's a vermi! It's a vermi! You need a vermi! It's actually smaller than my jig. <laughs> Look how cute it is! Alrighty, we caught our vermilion snapper. So you can see the vermilion snapper has the red eye. And 
and let's see we've got the yellow stripes on the body very faint though and little yellow tips on the fins especially that dorsal fin over there so basically you guys might remember in the last episode the yellow eye snapper had the clear yellow eye and the vermilion snapper has the vermilion eye we're on again on again working our way Stop right here. Rail. All right. I said this was the last drop before we took a snack break. Unless. Unless we caught a fish. Now that we have a fish on. We gotta do one more. We are not gonna have a snack break anytime soon. Whew, this is a bigger one. Doing my little pumps. Not high sticking it, that would be useless. And, oh, his belly's inflated. He's coming up. All right, talk about that, Amanda. All right, so. When a fish, get when a fish is on the bottom, its air is a certain size and then the air expands as the fish comes up quickly and as the air expands the belly expands and the fish eventually starts to just float up he's still fighting me but i can tell he's either getting tired or he's floating we're so getting there how much of your spool is full almost there all right like maybe three quarters yeah let's keep our eyes out for some color for a little shine little maybe reddish shine down there. So you're thinking vermi or yellow eye or ham bone. Oh, it's, it's one of the it's, three. It's a vermi. I'm thinking it's vermi. a vermi. No, 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 I'm thinking it's a yellow eye. Okay, keep your eye out for some color. Look in the water. Here we go. Come on, there it is. It's a yellow eye. I was right. Oh, you were right. It is my side. Yellow eye. I knew it was a yellow eye because of how heavy he was. And vermies don't normally get as large as yellow eyes because of how heavy he felt. I said, he's gotta be yellow eye. Once again, still the using strike, 440. the same exact jig. The color is working, everything is working. Not gonna change it. All right, Amanda, now I'm gonna drop it down. Uh-huh. And you're gonna put that fish on ice. Yes. Status update. Well, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure. So I dropped it down and it pretty quickly got tight, but it felt like it got stuck in bottom. And then I reeled, and then it was just kind of like dead weight. And so it's either a sand tile, because those kind of feel like dead weight. It's a piece of the bottom, because that would be dead weight. Or it's a yellow eye or a vermilion that's just not really fighting like so normal. So there's no possibility that your arms are tired and the jig And it's also tiny. very possible that I just am getting really tired and there's nothing on it. You said it's a little fish? Yeah. Guys, oh wait, is it a Toro? <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, so I wasn't crazy. What I was feeling, definitely, look at it. Look at the little cute guy. Oh my gosh, it looks like a jump goldfish. It's a goldfish, it's a baby. Also known as a Toro. That's awesome. Oh my gosh, look how cute. It's a little. Okay, we had some doubts about okay. what it was. We brought it back to like six different people back there. And at first nobody knew. They were like, it looks like a Toro, but it also looks like a baby Alfonsino. We've caught those before. And the final consensus is that it is some species of a Toro. So, All right. So, so if anybody wants this to wild in looking the fish, and let us know. Let us know. Obviously, once we have cell service, we can probably do some more Google searching. Yeah. So it's definitely not a baby Alfonsino, and it's in the Toro family. All right. I put my bait down right away at the new spot. We Literally. Move spots. You didn't tell them spots. We move spots. Literally, one lift of the rod, one drop, I was on. Just like that. Just like that. So fast. What do you think it is? It's either a very good snapper, snapper? like ham bone or something. I can't really tell. I don't really feel like it's fighting a lot, but it's definitely heavy. It's definitely, I feel like if they don't like fight a ton, they're like it's some kind of like snapper. Snappers. Or it could surprise me, but I'm thinking snapper. How much your spool do you have left? I'm almost there. All right, everyone, start to look for some color. We have color. Here's the color. It's a, a scam. scam. Wow. It's a scam. Wait I a minute. literally That's would not have guessed that this is a group breath. I would not have guessed group breath. Oh. Two scams. scams. Amanda. Hooked in the eyeballs. Way to go. Did not expect that. Okay. Second scamp of the trip. That's amazing. I have the never two caught scamps? two scamp groupers on one, one trip. trip. So wow, that was instant. Honestly, this guy didn't really give much bite, felt a lot like dead weight. That's why I was thinking snapper or something. Pleasantly surprised. What a great catch. 
Still using the same jig, the nothing same has changed, same technique. And caught another scamp Scam group. Or this is a personal best for the trip for me on species at least. So I did one drop and caught a fish. Yep. Emily just did one drop and caught, caught a fish. fish. So we're on at this location. Two for two. two. Fish. Two, two for, for two, two and hook up right here, and then it isn't someone hooked up to the left as well. No. Oh, oh yes. Good. Yeah. Oh, I think so. Yeah, there's another hookup down there. What's your guess? You gotta give a guess. It was a really small bite, so I'm gonna say like a yellow eye or a vermi. Let's hope you're proven wrong like I was. Yes. Honestly, it hit bottom and I got bit. Like I didn't even do a first like to me. jig, it's and insane. then. Uh, to be honest, I was like, oh, there's no way. So I like jigged it again, and I was like, oh yeah, he's there. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I doubted myself, but he was there. Just like that. We see color. I don't see color. It's under, it's under the boat. Un color yeah, under the boat. Here he comes. Yeah. Gotta get him. It looks like, whoa, it's a vermilion. Oh, he just came no! off. He just came no! off. There he is. Wait. Drop it down. Drop it down. Grab it up. Oh no. Yes. Yeah. Our vermilion snapper made it into the boat. Nice catch. Oh, there he is. Oh. Got all three in. Good job. I'm on again. It's not a big one. It's probably another vermilion or small hand bone. Someone just caught a toro. You looked right Wait, there, Amanda. It? Yeah, look down right there. It's my idea. It's coming in. <laughs> oh, there it is. It's so funny. So it's possible that I have seen. Yeah. Oh, oh, Toro on the jig. <laughs> Emily, what do you think you got? I have a hunch I have the same thing. Because he was not really a same thing, not really a big fighter. Kind of just hooked very naturally. Oh, yeah. Easily. Almost there. The exhaust. That's good. He's real. All right, that's a Toro. You can go ahead and toss him if you want. Oh, goodbye. All right, so we all agree that was a Toro. That was right? obviously a Toro, and now you guys can remember the resemblance between my Toro species, some <laughs> family of a Toro. You don't remember when it was. So I remember when it was. Me. You guys remember I caught the Toro looking species that was not actually a toro so you just saw a well, real toro so maybe side by side so have it pop up for you guys so you'd be like well, that was the toro and then mine was the unknown species of some sort of toro and for the record i have nothing on emily caught nothing i think i think i had a bite no i mean i know i had a bite it was probably a little one of those toros and it probably fell off along the way up because guys these jigs are pretty heavy and when you have a little fish on it's definitely Sometimes. not much no, but this thing is getting the work. Wow, we have used it nonstop. There's like teeth marks in it. Point teeth, marks. teeth marks. Teeth mark. There. Teeth mark right there. Teeth mark. Teeth mark. Where? You can't see right there. there. Teeth marks. Teeth marks everywhere. It's doing its job. You guys have seen us use the strike jigs this entire time because they're working. And like Amanda said earlier, when something's working, don't necessarily change it. But I do want to show you if the conditions were different, like the amount of variety that you could have in slow pitch jigs. And what you would use. Yes, okay, so let's talk about that. This is our pre-rig jig box, so go ahead and open it up. So, so earlier, in here is we were talking about how, depending on the condition, you might use a 240, right, so, so explain which one's a 240. So let's say we're in shallower water, all right? You would use this 240. And there we go. Okay, we so get the idea. This is also from the Strike series, but a lighter jig for shallower water. Still streamlined. Yes. Or even even lighter and maybe shallower or maybe no current is the Deep series. So the Deep series has these like wings on it. It's so 200 grams and they have the Deep all the way up to the bigger sizes back here, like the 440s, but it's gonna fall differently. It will, yes, different action. So this is for shallow water, maybe not a ton of current. And then we'll just work our way up. So I have mine organized. This is 200. These are 240s. This next section here like is 340s. probably 340s. Yeah, 300, 300 and 340. So this is the deeper. So it's the same one. So this is the deep and this is the deeper. So it's just bigger and heavier. But it's the same action of jig. And then we got the 440s. And the then back guys. here we got the big guys. 340s and 440s. And I think this is the deepest. Right there. So the biggest of the deep series is the deepest, deepest, 400 grams, same 
as these two. And then we also have other options here, guys, like the eyedrop jigs, which you guys may have seen us use in our last series. Now, even though I probably will not need to go past this box, I always bring back up, here is the Jig Pro bag, okay? The Jig Pro jig bag. So here's all my backup jigs, and I'm storing these unrigged. So all my unrigged jigs are in here. More varieties. Got a couple more varieties, some different colors, sizes, shapes. Got some here that are still in their packaging. But this is my bag that I keep everything in, all the extras. So then what we do is we organize everything by style of fishing. So I have the jig bag. So there goes my box. Split, Split ring, ring pliers. pliers. What else do you got in here? Push it's, push it. it's, oh, there's the push it. Lots of meter it. mates. <laughs> Lots of push it. A scale. scale. And then this bag is our bottom fishing bag. So this one's pretty reorganized by sinkers. It's 16, 12, 10 sinkers. And the bottom is all the hook speeds, swivels. And I've got like knives up front if I want to like debone some ballyhoo. So this bag's ready to go for bottom fishing. Overboard. That's it. Good girl. You ready? Okay. Okay. Kona is having some play time away from everybody up top. I feel like it's been a really good day, Amanda. Don't it's you great. think so? I mean, a long few hours ago, it was not very good. And then once the sun rose, this whole day has been great. Guys, stay tuned. As you know, we have more for you. In the meantime, we hope you guys get out there, have fun, and stay safe.